2019 was an amazing year for this channel. There were lots of improvements, some amazing growth. And in this video, we're going to count down the top 10 most viewed videos that I made in 2019, as well as a look to the future of 2020 and beyond. Hey everybody, it's Joe, and what a year it has been. In 2019, my YouTube channel passed 25,000 subscribers, which is a big deal for me. This isn't a channel that sees rapid growth. It's been slow and steady, and just hitting that milestone for me meant so much. And thank you to all of you who subscribed and are watching and that is that is absolutely wonderful. There's also been a number of technical achievements, big and small. And one of those achievements, for instance, that a lot of people mention is they say, have you got a green screen? Is that like we can see a little bit around the edges? Yes, I'm using a green screen. Because in order to get some of the new equipment in that I have been able to afford thanks to my supporters on Patreon, and again, I don't mention Patreon enough, but thank you guys for enabling me to, to do a silly little project like this. I've had to rearrange my recording space, which means that now the camera is pointing at the rest of my room, which is not worth looking at. So let's give you guys something a little bit more interesting to look at. But that said, that wasn't the only uh, great thing that happened in 2019. In 2019, I got to go to more fairs and conventions than I ever had before, including the Bay Area Maker Fair again, and I really loved that. The East, the Midwest Rep Rap Festival first, and then because of that, I went to the East Coast Rep Rap Festival as well. There were also smaller conventions and fairs in between there. But that, that is a huge, huge deal for me. Getting out and, and being in public like that is somewhat difficult for me. And it was great. And it was only made possible by the supporters of the Low Poly Dinos and the Chibimal Kickstarters. So thank you guys for your support on those Kickstarters. Those infusions provided me with what I needed to be able to get out and do those things. And talking about the low poly or about the chibi malls. There was some uh, advancements on that that I'd like to really quickly talk about. First of all, uh, the release of the farm pack. So I finished my first expansion to chibi malls and this has been a labor of love for me. Chibi malls is not, it's certainly not as popular as low poly dinos or as other projects that I could have done. But for me, this has been super meaningful and getting getting to this first expansion was huge for me. And I want to continue working on Chibi Malls and see that develop in the future. There's a lot that I want to do with Chibi Malls. There's a whole story that I want to tell. I want to make animations. I want to make all kinds of cool things. But Admittedly, I have to put those aside for a little bit right now because I need to start working on, well, if I'm going to do any fairs or conventions next year, I need to have a big successful Kickstarter. So I've asked for you guys to cast your vote and tell me what you think should be my next big Kickstarter. And I will have a link in the description where you can go ahead and cast your vote for what should the next major Kickstarter be. I've also worked on, uh, I've, I've also started streaming on Twitch, and you've seen some of those videos here, but every Monday, every Monday morning, I I do some 3D modeling, and we have a good time 3D modeling together and doing some fun stuff, so you can come join me on Twitch, and there will be a link in the comments for that as well. But, that said... Um, let's, let's get to the countdown now. Let's take a look at the biggest videos that I made in 2019 and, and, uh, maybe analyze a little bit what that means for this channel going forward. So coming in at number 10, this video, how to 3d print and, and make money while unboxing was not the first time that I talked about how to make money with 3D printing. It's a big topic. It's a topic that a lot of people want the answer to. But in previous videos, I, I kind of 
interjected my personal anecdotes around a framework of this is what you should do. And a lot of people didn't like that. They didn't like, they were like, oh, you're, all you're telling me is your personal story. I want to, you know, it's in there if you dig for it. But in this video, I decided I would be explicit. This is what you do. Step one, step two, no personal anecdotes in there. And it made the top 10 list because of it. People liked that video and they watched that video. Also during that video, it was an unboxing because I find that the videos where I'm doing something, where my hands are busy while I'm working, make for better viewing. And so that's what I did. And, and I think it paid off uh, in the top 10. That was fantastic. Coming in at number nine. My review of the Soul Scanner, I'm, I'm really excited. You guys really like hardware reviews, and I got to talk about not just this one scanner that I used, but a whole range of scanners. However, you might not recognize that thumbnail. When I first uploaded it, it was with this thumbnail, and it wasn't really well received, so I changed the thumbnail to this, and I think that that made the difference and gave this video the almost 6,000 views that it needed to make it onto this list at number nine of the most viewed videos that I made. Coming in at number eight. It's a simple hardware review. I, I had a CNC machine that was sent to me and they said, review it. And I said, okay, but I really didn't have anything to say about this, so it was a five-minute review. I just got in, said what I wanted to about the machine, and got out, and I don't know if it's because people really like hardware reviews. I don't know if it's because I, I, I really didn't have anything to say in this video. In this video, I basically just said, yes, I have this thing. I've tried it out. It works, but I have no idea what to do with it. Bye, and then it made it onto the list somehow. So there we go. CNC Y, the, the Jinmitsu CNC review router is number eight and coming in at number seven. Again, another uh, hardware review. This one aired in September, so it hasn't had that long. The Jinmitsu review also hadn't had that long. And uh, yeah, it was just a five minute review. Now this was a good one. I came in and said, yes, I'm using this machine. It's great. But do I have a whole lot to say about another Creality machine? Um, I actually made a mistake in this video and said that it had filament out detection, which it doesn't have. So I'm, I'm gonna have to correct that. Well, I suppose I'm correcting it now. It doesn't have filament out detection, guys. Oops, sorry, but five minute review. It wasn't a whole lot of effort for me to make, but you guys liked it with already almost 7,000 views. It's coming in at number seven. Number six. I am so happy to see this video so high on this list. It, it means a lot to me because this video is the sort of video that I want to be producing more of. It's a discussion about a topic that I feel is important and we need to discuss more. And I think that I've been justified in talking about this because later on in the year, Prusa put out a video saying, yes, we should be supporting 3MF and here's what it is. And, and a lot of people on that video said, hey, 3D Printer Professor already said that, which is, it's good. It's good that that sentiment is being echoed by others. And I'm not, I'm not uh, trying to put any sort of like, hey, I was first on this. This is the sort of discussion I feel like we should be having more often in 3D printing. And so I'm excited that you guys liked it. It aired back in February, so those 7,000 views might be buffered a little bit by the fact that it's had more time on the list, but it's a meaningful video, and I'm really happy that it's on this list. Number five. This video, I am so happy, is on the list. Now, it's interesting that this is not the first video where I was teaching about Blender. It's also interesting that this is not the last, but this is the only one that showed up on this list. Still aired in September, and it's got more than 7,000 views already. I, f I think that that's great. I think that you guys react well and enjoy the tutorial videos, and I hope to do more of them. I really, really... I called myself the 3D printing professor because I was teaching college at the time, 
And now I'm not teaching college. So in order to call myself the professor, I need to do more videos like this. You guys like them. That's great. We'll see more of them in the future. Now at number four. Oh, the Da Vinci Color. This this printer has been... I, I have more to say on this printer. And I think that this one really benefits from the advantage of time. But uh, it's another hardware review. But it's also one where you guys are curious about the Da Vinci Color. I think that you guys want to know more about this printer. I think that a lot of people are looking at this technology and asking, is it worth it? And so... I have more to say on that. I'll be saying more about it next year. But it seems like I, I, haven't, I haven't really done anything in video about this since February. And there's a reason for that. This, this machine has been, well, like I say, I'll say more about it in the future. We'll just leave it at number four and move on. Number three. So this is another video that is exactly the sort of question that I hear asked frequently in the makerspace. And so I'm simply answering a question that people have. And you guys responded well. Again, advantage of time. It's been up there since February. But with almost over 9,000 views, that means something. That means that this video struck a chord with people, that it was answering the question that they had. And so they were going to it. And so, boom, there we go. Can't. Can't uh, you know? Can you 3D print with with more than one color out of you know different ways to do it? And I talk about painting and I talk about multi-material, but I also talk about single nozzle solutions. And you guys liked it, so we'll see more of that in the future. Coming up on the end now. Here's number two. All right, so. This video was basically just my Midwest Rep Rap Festival wrap up video. I wasn't trying to, uh, you know, make any predictions. I was just talking about what I saw at the Midwest Rep Rap Festival, and yet it did spectacularly well. Ten thousand views really quickly. It, those views ramped up. And why? Why were you guys watching this video so much? Maybe, maybe it was that thumbnail. It's a brilliant thumbnail, and it really caught people's attention. Maybe it was the topic. Now, I did try to follow this up with another video, but that video had lower production quality, and so maybe the production quality factored in there. I don't know, but this is my number two video that I made in 2019, and uh, I really don't know how to follow up with this other than maybe just another topic video, and we'll see about that in the future. So there we go. So at this point, are you guys wondering what my number one video is? Let's find out what number one is. Yeah, it was the Lego video. Now, what's interesting about this video is, again, it's not the first time I talked about Lego. This was actually the second part in the Lego debacle saga. Um, and another thing that's interesting is if you look closely at that thumbnail, those aren't Lego bricks. Those are kid craft bricks in the thumbnail. I didn't even put Legos in the thumbnail, but people got the idea. And maybe it was because it was a hot button topic. I don't know if I could capture that again, if people care about Legos and 3D printing the same way they did at the moment when this aired. But it was the right video at the right time. And it's definitely motivating what's coming in the future. I have been working since then on 3D printing more Lego bricks and making... 3D printable Lego bricks that that uh, won't fail if your tolerances are off just a little bit. And it's time to report those to you. I think that'll be my next video to you guys. Um, so, yeah, the, the Lego debacle, hot topic, and it was my number one video of the year. However, this whole thing brings up a point that I, I feel we need to discuss, and it is this. These were not my most watched videos in 2019. These were the most watched videos that I made in 2019. But when I told YouTube, hey, show me my most watched videos in 2019, the first five or six of them, videos that outperformed these videos in this year, were from previous years. People are watching my older videos more than they're watching my newer videos. So clearly, I think I think the lesson here is simple. 
I have no idea what I'm doing. For some reason, you guys like my old stuff more than my new stuff. Why? Why? I don't understand. And I, I, I'm not even talking about, like, in general. It's not that they have more views. They were more viewed in 2019 than the videos that I was making in 2019. What? What am I doing here? How can I improve this? So I wonder if the lesson here is that I need to look to the past to figure out my future. Maybe I just, I have no idea what I'm doing. And maybe, maybe it's the ties. Maybe you guys don't like the, the, I mean, I put on the ties because it's the persona of the 3D printing professor, not because I wear ties all the time. I mean, I wear button up shirts all the time, but I don't always wear ties. And, and maybe people don't respond to the idea of a dude in a tie talking about 3D printing as much. Now, I'm comfortable wearing ties, and I have a lot of great ties. And a lot of you who like my videos watch the t uh, like the ties, but maybe the people in general don't. And maybe I should spend 2019 wearing fewer ties and talking more genuinely and honestly about these things. I'm going to give it a shot and see where it goes. I also, while I talked about improvements in the technology, I'm not using some of those. I'm using a webcam right now, and I'm going through my computer and streaming it, essentially using my streaming setup to do these videos. And I do that because it's been harder and harder for me to make videos. My personal life, I have young kids, and young kids sometimes get in the way of making videos. And so finding the time and the effort to do that, especially when you've got a two-year-old in the other room who is disagreeing with you about ideas concerning bedtime, you know, it, it gets difficult to make a video like that. And so my video production has kind of dropped off and I've tried to make it easier and easier to do, but I think that the views are suffering because of that. Now, all in all, I don't know what the future holds. And I think that you guys uh, are still going to be and can be a big part of that. And so I look forward to hearing from you in the comments what you think. I appreciate all of you who are supporting me on Patreon and against all odds, putting up with me while I go through this period. And let's hope that the future is brighter as we go forward. And as I continue to try to refine what I'm doing, make it better, make it better for you. But that's all I got for it. This has been a great year, and I'm hoping that 2020 will be an even better year. Thank you guys for your support, and we'll see you in next year. Oh, before I go, a lot of you guys commented on the beard, uh, and this beard was just two months worth of growth for me. I stopped shaving in November, and then before the end of December, I'm needing to start trimming it. So it's gratifying to know that I can grow a beard quickly, but it's not going to last long, guys. When you see me next time, it will be gone. I know, I know, but there's a reason for it, and it's personal. It may come back in the future, but if you want to see the beard apocalypse. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, where I will be posting pictures. I'm not going to shave it all at once. I may shave it in sections. We'll see what comes out of that. So if you want to see that, follow me on Twitter. But as always, I want to remind you guys, safety first, because I care about you. And I'll see you next time.